Once a month, Paula Pant, host of the Afford Anything podcast, answers voicemail questions the listeners send in. Here's one now. Hi, Paula. My question is about preparing financially for an aging parent. My mother-in-law is 66 years old this year. She's divorced with $10,000 to her name, no retirement savings, and will be getting a Social Security check for a few hundred dollars a month. With her worsening health situation, I'm afraid she'll need to stop working this year. I know she has little time, but I'm trying at least to stretch the money I have for her as far as it can go. So, I'm thinking about opening either a traditional or Roth IRA for her. At her age, she's allowed to contribute $6,500, and with her low income, it seems like she might qualify for a retirement savings contribution credit. Do you think this is a good idea, or are there potential pitfalls that I'm not seeing? And do you think there's an advantage to choosing one type of account over the other? Related to this, do you have any other general advice? We're saving and investing as much as we can, but is there anything else we can do to prepare? Even with Medicare, I know there will be extra expenses to pay out of pocket. What would your 5- or 10-year plan be if you were facing this situation? Thank you for hosting such an amazing show. You are truly changing lives. Wow. I am so sorry to hear that. To be honest, I I got a little emotional when I first heard this question, and I was listening to it with Will, and, and he felt the same way. We both... Your question hit both of us really hard, because... I feel for your situation. I really do. And I think it's really admirable that that you care so much and that um, you care enough to not just be calling into the show, but to, as you said, be saving and investing as much as you can and, and clearly worrying about this and trying to make sure that this person whom you love, who is unprepared for retirement and is 66 and is not in good health, has a good future, a humane and just the best future that she can. So thank you so much for your generosity and your heart. And thank you for being the type of person who asks this question. All right, here are a few things that I would say to this. Now, first and foremost, I'm assuming that you've had conversations already with your mother-in-law about what she thinks that her plans for retirement are. But just for the sake of covering all of our bases, as well as for the sake of anybody else who's listening who might be in a similar situation— Step one is to talk to your mother-in-law about what is happening inside her head. What does she think that her retirement plan is? You want to uh, just make sure that you have a good idea of what's the plan that's happening inside of her head. Once you get that out in the air, once you just know that information, some things that you're going to want to ask, what assets does she possess? I know you said that she has about $10,000 in savings, but does she have any other assets? For example, does she own a house? And if so, is the house paid off? How much equity does she have in this house? And what are her plans for it? What are her plans for her living situation? So if, hypothetically, if she owns a house and she wants to live independently, would it be possible for her to sell that home, downsize into a smaller home, and then use the equity from selling her home and, and moving to somewhere smaller in order to to pad that retirement account, in order to have some money that she can live on. That's one possibility. If she wants to stay in her home, another possibility could be to do a reverse mortgage. I typically, uh, that's, that's kind of a complicated topic, and it's not one that I want to dive into the weeds here, um, but that is a possibility. It wouldn't be my first option, but uh, it's on the table for the sake of discussion. Alternatively, if your mother-in-law can live with you or can live with one of her other children, she wouldn't have to pay any rent or mortgage. She probably wouldn't, you know, depending on the agreement that she made with the kids, wouldn't have to pay utilities or maybe even groceries. Uh, That could go a long way towards helping her save the remainder of the income that she makes for the sake of her retirement. And if she does have a home, then the money that she that she is able to liquidate by virtue of selling her home could also pad those savings. For all of those reasons, you want to ask her what assets she holds. Uh, you also want to ask her what insurance she currently has. And specifically, you want to find out if she has any type of insurance that can help with long-term care. 
it would be kind of expensive to get long-term care insurance at this stage. I would encourage you to at least get the information, see what those costs are, and then have a discussion as to whether or not you think this is a worthwhile purchase. Because uh, long-term care is expensive, yes. Uh, That being said, long-term care insurance, especially at this stage, could also be expensive. So at least investigate that option. That's another thing that I would absolutely say. Other things you should be looking at, a durable power of attorney so that you can make financial decisions if and when she is uh, unable to do so. You also want to establish a durable medical power of attorney, also known as a durable power of attorney for health care. And this allows you to make health care related decisions. And in line with that, you'll also want to make sure that she has a living will so that you know what she wants. In other words, you know what her advanced medical directives are. So to recap, a durable power of attorney, a durable medical power of attorney, and a living will, in addition to having a conversation about long-term care insurance and having a conversation about other assets that she holds that could be liquidated and turned into cash. Let's get those established, get information about all of those. Now, as to your specific question about a Roth IRA, that Roth IRA, if it's set up in her name, then the funds for that Roth IRA need to come from earned income that she can show. So in other words, if you wanted to give her a gift of $6,500 and that gift is money that she would put into a Roth IRA, that's fine as long as she can show earned income of at least $6,500. Now, you mentioned that she's working this year, so this year it should be fine. But in the future, she's going to need earned income of at least the amount that's put into that Roth IRA. Now, that being said, the other thing that I would mention here is because her time horizon is so short, you don't want to put the IRA assets too heavily into equities. Again, because she's living on a very short time horizon, she may need access to this money right away or very quickly. The simplest solution in terms of how you may invest the money that's in the Roth IRA, the easiest solution is a Vanguard target date retirement fund with that target date being set for 2015 or 2020. That's the the simple 80-20 solution. If I were in your shoes, that's probably what I would do. The other thing, in addition to a Roth IRA, I I think that's a great idea, but I would also recommend, if you are able to, that you set aside an emergency fund that is specifically for her expenses. So in other words, you may have an emergency fund for yourself, but on top of that, have a separate emergency fund for her. And then decide, and this is going to have to be a conversation between the family, Decide if and when you do give her any money, particularly money that comes out of that emergency fund, decide if you're going to give her the money or pay some of her bills directly. Like, for example, pay some of her medical bills directly or pay even utility bills or uh, rent bills directly. The advantage to paying bills directly rather than giving her the money is that you can make sure that that money is being used for its intended purposes. So those are some of the things that I would encourage you to think about. I hope that's helpful. I know it's not a complete and total answer and you're facing an uphill battle and you've got a lot of work ahead of you, but I'm glad that you're asking these questions now and good luck. I will in the show notes, which is available at affordanything.com slash episode six, seven. That's affordanything.com slash episode six, seven. I will link to resources related to this question and related to some of the stuff that I've talked about. Thank you so much and best of luck. Hey, did you enjoy this excerpt from the Afford Anything podcast? Then click to download our free ebook, Escape. You'll be taken to a page where you can enter your email for immediate access to everything you need to know about escaping the nine to five grind to live life on your terms. And you can also subscribe with one simple click to get alerted when new videos are uploaded.